Welcome everyone, my name's Chris Evans and I'm extremely pleased to be with you today to present Winsome Resources scoping study for the Adena Lithium Project in Quebec. This scoping study has been a good 12 months in the making and it's a testament to the hard work put in by our project team. And what it shows is that not only is Adena a world-class lithium resource on its own, but when it's coupled with the Renard operation to the south, it presents a low risk, low capex development proposition. I'll be presenting a scoping study results today which are compliant under the JORC code. However, in Canada, we're also publishing a PEA, a preliminary economic analysis under the National Instrument NI 43101. But the headline numbers for the two studies are the same. At the end of the presentation today, as usual, I'll be taking questions from anyone in the audience who would like to ask them. As a broad overview and background for those of you who aren't familiar with the Winsome story, we have the Adena lithium deposit, which is 78 million tonnes at 1.15% lithium oxide, with over 80% of that in the indicated category under the JORC code. That makes it one of the largest lithium resources in North America. It is outcropping at surface for the majority of its three kilometre strike length, and it's open in all directions. So we've got the capacity to significantly increase that over the coming years as we continue our drilling. In addition to that, we have the option to purchase the Renard Diamond Mine. It's located just 60 kilometres to the south of our Adena deposit. It's had almost a billion dollars spent on it uh, over the last 10 years in infrastructure, and it has all the ingredients we need to repurpose it to process our lithium. Since the early part of this year, when we acquired the option to purchase Renard, we've been working on studies to determine how best we structure these two fantastic assets and put them together to work out a development pathway forward. We've now done this with the scoping study, and what it shows is a very robust, low capital cost, low risk lithium operation that's primed to fill a gap in the North American lithium supply chain later this decade. I'll now start by going through the statistics from the project. However, as with any study or project, the devil's in the detail. And we're particularly proud of the work that's gone into this study from the project team. The advanced infrastructure we already have in place, making it a very robust study. So please go through the ASX announcement that was just put out in order to gain the benefit of the statistics and the detail that's contained within that, that release. So we have an initial mine life of 21 years with an average annual production of about 280,000 tonnes of 5.5% lithium oxide concentrate per annum. We have an all-in sustaining cost of 693 US dollars per tonne, which is extremely competitive in today's market. We have a capital cost of around 250 million US dollars, which is extremely financeable compared to many of their peers and projects in the past. And also there's a simple payback period of less than two years. And all of this is based on a 5.5% assumed sale price of $1,375 per tonne. The key differentiator between our project and those of our peers and those have gone before us is the existing infrastructure that we can harness at the Renard operation. When we signed the exclusive option to acquire this earlier in the year, we, one of the, the main reason we did it was due to the infrastructure. But throughout the study, we've realised how important that infrastructure is and what an advantage it gives us. And ultimately, how lucky we are to get our hands on that in order to, to use it to concentrate our lithium. All major components of the existing DMS plant at Renard can be repurposed with only minor modifications needed to process our lithium ore. We can reuse and will be reusing the LNG power plant that's currently in place. And we think this is particularly important and, and demonstrates the nature and the approach of our study. And by this, I mean, although renewable energy is a big feature in Quebec, it's not all that easy to come by in today's world. We have elected to use the existing safe, secure power supply of LNG to power our plant because it again gives us a definitive pathway to production uh, and removes uncertainty associated with approvals. 
In the future, of course, and as part of our studies going forward, we hope to be able to use renewable energy in some form, be it hydro, wind or solar. As with the DMS plant and the power plant at Renard, we'll be using all of the other infrastructure as part of our ADENA lithium processing operation. This includes the airport, the processed ore facility, the water treatment system, the camp and the maintenance facilities. All of this adds up to less disturbance area, less complexity in our approvals and a lower risk production proposition. So as an overview of our operations as, as contemplated in the scoping study, firstly our ore will be mined by open pit methods for the entire 21 year life of mine at Adena and then placed in trucks and driven approximately 75 kilometres to the south to our Renard operation. There the lithium will be processed using the existing facilities with some slight modifications into a 5.5% concentrate and thereafter it will be trucked south to either the battery materials hub at Beckencore or seaports on the St Lawrence River. The infrastructure we need for the Adena lithium operation can be considered in three parts. The first part is at Adena itself, where there's modest infrastructure associated with mining, waste and water management. The second piece of infrastructure is the road, which is about 75 kilometres to be constructed between Adena and the Renard to the south. And then the third inf piece of infrastructure is Renard, where minor modifications are needed to the existing DMS plant in order to process our lithium. Our project timeline shows us submitting our initial project description in the coming weeks to initiate the environmental approval process at both the provincial and the federal level. Next year, 2025, we'll see us completing another year of baseline environmental studies. And at the end of 2025, we expect to be completing our full feasibility study. We expect all of this to lead us to commissioning and operations sometime in 2028, which reflects a realistic representation of the federal and the provincial approval process. But also it's reflective, I think, of the lower risk proposition that we offer compared to other traditional greenfield projects. When we take a step back and look at our project in a global sense, we think the timing that I just outlined works very well. There's a forecast deficit from around 2028 in the global lithium supply market, and particularly in the IRA compliant ex-China North American battery materials supply chain that's being built up. Despite the current challenging times we see, there's still a forecast 13% compound annual growth rate in lithium, which is multiples above almost any other commodity in the market. So the demand's still there, the market's challenging at the moment, but everyone from us to market commentators to OEMs sees a significant deficit developing in the latter half of this decade. Additionally, when we look back over the last decade on the lithium projects, the hard rock lithium projects that have been financed into production or that are in the development phase and look likely to be financed, there's a number of common attributes between those which we think the Adena Lithium project possesses most of. First one is a, a, a decent mine life, greater than 15 years. The second is a certain amount of minimum production, and that relates to feeding conversion facilities, greater than, greater than say 200,000 tonnes per annum. The third one is capital efficiency. DMS only adds to capital efficiency and existing infrastructure adds to capital efficiency Meaning, a, meaning overall a lower capital cost, which is more e easily financeable. A manageable all-in sustaining production cost, which is capable of riding out market highs and lows. And also uh, the jurisdiction in which the project is located. Uh, it tends to be harder to get financed if you're in a lower class jurisdiction. And of course, Canada and Quebec uh, feature amongst the top 10 in, in the Fraser Institute year after year in terms of mining jurisdictions. So we think the Adena Lithium project, in combination with the Renard infrastructure, makes us 
one of the most financeable projects on the market today. Despite the impressive results that are presented in our scoping study, we still think there's many opportunities for upside. And they'll come about over the next year or two as we complete our trade-off and then feasibility studies in 2025. And some of these are, firstly, throughput of the plant. The current nameplate capacity of the Renard plant is 2.2 million tonnes per annum. Now we've assumed 1.7 million tonnes per annum for our lithium throughput in order to be conservative and make sure we can produce what we estimate we're going to produce. We can Im increase the throughput to 2.2 or perhaps even above with virtually no modifications and a couple of bottlenecks. This offers an op opportunity for increased production and a better NPV. Secondly, there's room at Renard to double the size of the plant. We can double capacity if we wish and I think this is a natural study that will come as we increase the size of our resource with drilling into 2025. And then the third expansion opportunity is, is at Adena itself. Um, with further expansions of the resource, it may even make sense to build processing infrastructure up at Adena in the future, given the extremely low capex we're seeing now and the ability to get finance and start off and start making money for a low capital cost. The second opportunity is to introduce clean energy options into our operation. This could include hydro, solar or wind, and all of those will be studied next year in order to lower the carbon footprint of our project. Underground mining offers the opportunity to gain access to more resources at Adena. The footwall zone may well be able to be accessed by underground mining and additional resources to be discovered through further exploration may well be more amenable to underground mining. Now underground mining reduces the surface infrastructure required and may well mean lower ongoing sustainable capital costs. And downstream partnerships I think offers a real opportunity for us. We have stated in the past that we're looking to ultimately keep our product in Quebec as part of the growing battery material supply chain there and we're actively looking for partners to make sure that happens. So where to from here? Now that our study is out on the market, for the rest of this year, we will be pursuing low cost trade-off studies in-house to ensure that we're set up in 2025 to pursue our full feasibility study and then subsequent resource expansion. Our environmental permitting process is about to start, as I've already described. I'm happy to take questions now. Thank you for your time today. And I think Winsome remains, after the publication of this scoping study, in a fantastic position going into the future. Sorry, everyone, um, for this rough transition. Uh, I'm on the road at the moment and have just uh, moved over to my laptop computer. Um, hopefully you all heard the majority of that presentation and now some questions have come through. Thank you for some kind comments uh, saying hello and uh, well done on releasing the study. Um, the first question is from Marco and it's about um, sustained capital. Uh, he talks about, he, he asked the question, uh, what costs are in there? Uh, sustained capital is comprised of a number of things. The, one of the major things is replacing the fleet. We've assumed an owner operator uh, mining fleet and we replace that halfway through, which is a relatively high capital cost, but it's a much lower operating cost than having a contract miner in. And the other one and the other major one of the major capital costs is a um, cutback to access the footwall zone some around halfway through the mine life. Now, uh, during that webinar, I pointed out that we've got an opportunity to do some under, underground mining, uh, which could reduce that sustaining capital cost. Uh, Jason's asked how far advanced are our strategic discussions and will this likely fund the acquisition and provide funding for Winsome going forward? I think now that, uh, as I've described previously, we have had a number of discussions over a sustained period, the last 12 months or so, with a core group of strategic potential strategic partners, and most of those are waiting on the, the study to come out. Now that it's out, I expect that will uh, catalyze discussions. And um, 
and I expect that we will get to the bottom of whether now is the right time in the market to take on a strategic partner. We don't need to take on a strategic partner in order to fund the acquisition, as, as Jason alludes to in his question. We can pay, there's three payments, uh, if everyone recalls the terms of our acquisition, there's three payments totaling $52 million, $15 million as we acquire it, $22 million a year later, and then a final 15 a year after that. Uh, all of those can be paid in shares, so we don't need actual money up front uh, in order to, to acquire it. We expect to have a healthy cash balance by the end of the year, and we can turn right down the care and maintenance costs on Renard. So that puts us in a good position throughout 2025 um, with, with our existing cash. So we're under no pressure to get a strategic partner. As I said, the conversations are ongoing, and I expect um, some of those conversations will be catalyzed by the publication of our study. Tony's asked, uh, he recalls the company having a target of 100,000 metres of drilling in 2024. Where are we with this? And do we anticipate um, any further drilling results? Well, we've actually drilled um, a total of 100,000. Uh, so we, we published, sorry, we drilled about 58,000 by the time our last resource update. And we've done some more drilling since then, which totals around um, 100,000 metres. Now, the majority of drilling in the last couple of months has been focused on the study. I think we talked in our last announcement about the fact that we've had to do sterilization drilling, we've done geotech, we've done um, um, uh, and we've done GF, um, some hydro drilling as well, all focused towards the study. So it's not necessarily focused on expanding our resource. We think that the circa 80 million tons we've got at the moment and the 20 year mine life as shown in the study, uh, is sufficient for the moment. We've covered our, our flow through costs for this financial year, or sorry, this calendar year, I should say. And therefore, we're not inclined to do a whole lot more drilling for the remainder of this year, although next year we'll launch back into that. I think our, our philosophy, as with many other companies at the moment, is that we're going to low cost activities now that the study is published for the remainder of this year. In order to conserve the healthy balance we have in the bank uh, until the lithium market improves and our ability to, to get more cash through whatever means that is, is improved. Uh, Gary's asked, what's the care and maintenance costs uh, per year for Renard? Um, so we're working on that at the moment. There's varying levels of care and maintenance. So we could keep it in warm care and maintenance, uh, which is going to be circa $10 million a year, or we could put it in colder care and maintenance, as the terminology goes, um, you know, to, to an extremity where uh, we've got certain obligations there for environmental monitoring and uh, water testing and things like that. Um, and we may want to keep parts of the camp open, but we could close it down significantly and reduce that by a lot. Um, so it's it's somewhere between five and ten million dollars uh, per year, depending on how we want to do it. Now, in the current environment, we'll be um, putting it in colder care and maintenance um, if and when we acquire it. Uh, but that may change in the future as we move towards the repurposing and starting it up again. Rob's asked if we can have an update on the progress for the application for road funding. Uh, that. No one has found out yet from the Critical Minerals Infrastructure Fund, for which we applied uh, in conjunction, sorry, I should say, uh, SCAN applied for it, which is a, um, a, a Cree-owned company in conjunction with us, um, applied to the Critical Minerals Infrastructure Fund. No one has been yet announced um, as re recipients for that fund. However, that's expected sometime in October. We assumed in our study that we would be funding the full cost of that road, which is circa a million dollars per kilometre, uh, but we remain confident there are funding options available from both the federal and the provincial government, which we may be able to access. Uh, 
Uh, Tony's asked in early information from the company, it was targeting a 6% concentrate. Um, and now we're showing 5.5. Um, what drives the concentration that can be achieved? And what is the significance financially of this slightly lower concentration? When we lower the concentration from six, the target concentration from 6 to 5.5%, what we do is we increase our ability to improve recovery in the process plant. And although the financial metrics drop with it, so for example, if we assume a $1,500 price for a 6% concentrate, then it's $1,375 for a 5.5% concentrate. So that aspect of the financial metrics drops, but our recovery improves. So overall, it's a, it's a better product. Um, it's also a little bit more conservative to do that because it's easier to achieve a 5.5% concentrate out of any plant than it is a 6%. Um, we may well, if market conditions dictate, um, move up to a 6% concentrate, uh, depending how, on how the plant operates and depending on what our customers want at the time. Uh, Gary has asked, is there any opportunity for income from Renard presently? Uh, yes, there is. So Renard is currently still doing a processing campaign. It's still producing diamonds from broken ore uh, that they've already essentially mined and they're just bringing to the surface and processing in campaigns. So that's great for us because it keeps the plant turning over. And in fact, we have a site visit where two days of site visits planned this coming week, Thursday and Friday, where we're bringing a host of um, investors and other interested parties to site. Uh, roughly a dozen each day, we're showing them both the Renard operation and the plant's going to be turned on processing diamonds at the time. Um, so interested parties can see how the plant works and see the fantastic facilities that are there. That's half the day. And then the other half of the day, the group will be flying out to look at our Adena. You can see the outcrops. You can see the drilling that's being done and the proximity of Adena to Renard. Um, so that's exciting um, that, that we're going to be doing that on the site visit. But to get back to the question, the potential for income, I think, is that Renard is a strategically located hub. I think with uh, a 300, roughly 300 personnel camp in place, there's a lot of activity going on in the area. When we take, if and when we take over the Renard operation, we may be able to utilize that camp. There's existing, I think the existing um, processed kimberlite offers many opportunities. It's high in magnesium oxide and it's high in other potentially valuable minerals. Uh, and it's ripe for the use of uh, clean energy. Wind and solar have yet to be used there, but I think it can be used and it could power a lot of activities in the area. So we're pretty excited about both the grants that are available to undertake those studies to investigate that, and then the potential to earn money, perhaps during the next few years while we go through our approval process. Uh, Hasmi's asked, is the, um, the $259 million capex already inclusive of the costs for the Adena Renard road construction uh, um, and the plant refurbishment. Yes, it is. We've assumed full that we assume the full cost for the road um, and, and of course, the plant refurbishment. Uh, Rob, Robert's asked, um, well, he's kindly said, congratulations to the PEA. Thank you, Robert. And what transport will be used to get to Beckencore and will the Quebec government get involved in construction of infrastructure? I think it's a very good question. There is rail, of course, at Shibugamu, which is located about 400 kilometres to the south of Renard. We've assumed that we're going to be driving, trucking our material, our concentrate, all the way down to the St Lawrence River, either to Beckencore or to a port on that river. The reason for that is the rail infrastructure from Beckencore uh, sorry, from Shibugamu down to Beckencore is in place, but it's currently not set up to take the sort of bulk material that we'll be moving, that sort of 280,000 tonnes per year. We think there's an opportunity to use that in the future, but we're yet to fully assess that. So again, erring on the side of reduced risk and somewhat caution, as we have done in every aspect of our study, we've assumed trucking, uh, but there's an opportunity to get on rail in the future and lower our operating costs. Paul's asked, was a greenfield development cost at Adena completed? And if so, what is the approximate capex saving? 
we started undertaking a greenfield scoping study as well but it quickly became apparent to us after we were halfway through that the capital cost savings on this brownfield option by repurposing renard far outweighed the benefits of a greenfield project and so we have completed a good part of a greenfield scoping study but we parked that partly in order to save costs but secondly because it became obvious what the the, the ideal solution was but there's hundreds of millions of dollars in savings by going down a brownfield, a, a repurposing route, as we've presented in this scoping study, compared to a greenfield operation. Um, Jason's asked, now that the scoping study has been released, yielding attractive economics and with Latin recently being acquired, um, we could be at risk. Is Winsome at risk um, of being taken out? I think that has always been a risk with us and I think we, we, we've engaged defence advisors for, for the last 12 months or so so that we are monitoring the market. We'll be very aware if someone tries to make an aggressive move on us. And I think we, we as, as directors, um, have are all shareholders and we hold the interests of shareholders at heart. And we will be, um, I think we have an idea of what fair value is. So yes, it's a, yes, it's a, a consideration, but we're putting measures in place to make sure, number one, we're aware of it. And number two, we protect ourselves um, as possible. Richard's asked, is there a possibility of existing public sector ownership of Renard continuing with an ongoing investment in Winsom? Uh, I think what, uh, if I interpret that question correctly, um, the, the public entities, which is um, CDPQ and um, Investment Quebec, which own currently own 50% of Renard, they have expressed an interest in continuing to invest in projects like ours. Um, now, if we pay the consideration for Renard in shares, then it will, um, they will naturally become shareholders of ours. And I, and I think there's no reason they wouldn't continue to support the project going forward. We haven't yet had those discussions and both of those organisations require a study to be out before they consider investment in a public company like us. So again, as with the strategic plays I referred to before, this study being out is um, a great catalyst for having those types of conversations with the current public sector owners of, of Renard. Uh, Hasmi's asked, um, given that the depressed lithium price is now almost at the same level as our all in sustaining cost is the company looking to bring down costs further in the next study and what areas of improvement are there yes we're definitely looking to do that um, what, one of the things we did in the study is we assumed lng uh, throughout the life of mine lng fired power plants now they're already in place at renard and we know that's a fairly safe option and it's a tried and true method of getting power to that fairly remote site uh, the approvals associated with hydropower and, in fact, the availability of hydropower uh, at the moment is not guaranteed, so we've gone with a safe option. But, of course, the operating cost for that is higher. So there's definitely an option to go for clean energy, which has a much lower operating cost, and there are many grants available to secure that. So we'll be looking into that. Uh, we think underground mining potentially offers a... Um, an opportunity in the future to tighten up our operations and then potentially getting on rail as well will give an opportunity to lower our operating costs. So there are three broad areas and there are several others as well. Um, for example, the, the throughput, the current throughput or the nameplate capacity of the processing plant at Renard is 2.2 million tonnes per annum, which is 6,000 tonnes a day. Uh, we're assuming about 4,700 tonnes a day uh, based on the test work we've done and based on some perceived being conservative and try not to create any bottlenecks in the current plant and minimising our capital expenditure, 
Uh, it's 4,700 a day. We think we can fairly easily crank that up and get it to 6,000 tonnes a day, which immediately brings forward some some of our um, profits um, uh, or some of the value in the project and, and again, tightens up our costs. Clark has asked, um, will the Canadian winter affect any progress for Winsome projects and how far has car manufacturers gone setting up in this region? The Canadian winter doesn't really affect any progress. The, the only thing we can't do in winter is on the ground field exploration, which for the moment uh, we don't need to do. The all Canadian operations are particularly well set up uh, to continue during winter. And you would have seen one of the early slides in our corporate presentation with that picture of Renard, everything is indoors. So it can operate uh, throughout the year. So it doesn't affect any of our progress. And car manufacturers are fairly well set up. Both Ford and GM are establishing battery facilities at Beckencore uh, presently and um, Northvolt, not a car manufacturer, but Northvolt as a battery maker is also setting up in, in Quebec. So there's a large presence of these downstream users in the, in the region. Uh, Gary's asked, will Winsome incorporate EV trucks into operations, um, especially considering um, regulations and targeting zero emission trucks? That's, again, something that we'll definitely look into. There is hydropower already available at places like Shibugamu. And if we can incorporate, if we can incorporate uh, solar and or wind, then that's even more opportunity to introduce EV trucks and uh, lower the carbon footprint of our project. Uh, Marco's asked, will Greenfield Economics be published? Um, uh, and a quick comment on how the figures compared. I, I think I've already addressed that one. Uh, Chris has asked timeline for PFS and DFS. Um, we will most likely move directly to a DFS. We've, we'll do some trade-off studies, as I say, low-cost trade-off studies with our in-house team for the most part for the rest of this year. And then next year, we'll launch into that full feasibility study, um, aiming for a, a DFS towards the end of 2025 or early 2026. And then Chris has also asked um, about the option to turn Renard into a contract processing hub for other lithium projects. That's, that is certainly a possibility given the existing infrastructure. I think the feed from Adena will take up most of the capacity of the existing plant but again, one of the slides under opportunities in our corporate presentation, well, that's a little bit busy. What it shows is the current layout of Renard, and it shows that there's room to put or to duplicate the existing processing plant. So we could double the, the output if we wished in terms of space. And given the camp and the road and the power plant and the water treatment plant and all the other infrastructure there, including the airfield, it may make sense if another large-ish deposit is discovered nearby to use Renard as a processing hub. I think I'll wrap up in a second. The questions are almost done. Um, Jason's also asked, um, are there any likely consolidations in Canada or partnerships or other companies who want to use Renard to process their spots? Um, similar question. Um, I think consolidation is quite possible. The, I suspect the, even though the, the lithium price is going to go through its next cycle and improve at some point in the near future, uh, we may be in a new world where unless you have, I don't know what the magic number is, but it could be, say, 50 million tonne resource, then it's going to be difficult to get into production. But that doesn't, that shouldn't mean, but so it may leave smaller deposits stranded unless they're in close proximity to a processing hub like Grenard. So I think... Um, thinking like that offers the possibility of consolidation, and uh, I'm sure that'll naturally happen as the as the market evolves in Quebec. I might take one more question. Um, and Tony's asked, "What impact does repurposing Renard have on its current permitting?" What we think is that repurposing Renard offers a lower risk opportunity uh, to get into production. 
and that's low risk, number one, because the capex is low compared to a greenfield opportunity uh, or a greenfield build. But number two, lower risk, because many of the infrastructure or much of the infrastructure is already, already has permits associated with it. We are, and some of it has to be repurposed. The permits have to be um, reapplied for because they relate to spodumene and pegmatites rather than kimberlites for the diamonds. Uh, but the environmental studies have been done in, in those cases, and we've got live data that we can show what the impacts are. So um, certainly some permits have to be reapplied for, but overall the risk is much lower, and we think um, that's what makes one of the reasons makes this very attractive. I think now I've taken up um, enough of everyone's time. Uh, I very much appreciate everyone logging in today, listening to the presentation, asking questions. It's great to see interest in this project and they're all very valid questions. Um, I'll keep the market updated with the future with future webinars and thank you all for your support.